is the PR interval. Normal PR interval is 0 0.122, 0 0.20 second. And if the PR interval is more than 0 0.20 second, then we call as first degree heart block. Okay. Now we talk about so this is the first degree heart block. All of you can make a box like this and you can do numbering box number one. Now we talk about 2A block. Also known as Morbid's type 1 block. First of all, I like to remind you, do not get confused with this morbid type 1 block with first degree heart block. First degree heart block is different and morbid type 1 block is different. And in fact, in the exam, this is the most commonly asked question. Let's see what is this morbid type 1 or so-called 2A block. So here is the recording. So what we are getting, we are getting PR interval, PR interval, PR interval, P and P. What we are noticing, that there is progressive increase in the PR interval, in the subsequent beat, till a P is followed by a drop of QRS and the same cycle star. This is so called 2A block. And this is also known as Wenke Beck phenomena. This is a very frequently asked question of the exam. Why do you note it? First degree heart block and two way block, they are benign conditions. That means they do not go, go into ventricular arrhythmias or ventricular fibrillation. Now we talk about morbids. Now we talk about 2B block. Also known as morbids type 2 block. So let's see, in recording, this is a P wave, one more P wave. And a QRS complex, P, P, QRS complex, P, P, QRS complex. So what you are noticing, we are getting a fixed number of P wave. P wave, one QRS complex, again P, P, one QRS complex, P, P, QRS complex. So there are fixed number of P wave followed by one QRS. So in this recording, we can say very comfortably you are getting two is to one block. That means there are two P wave followed by one QRS. So this is so-called Morbid type two block or so-called two B block. Point to note it. It can be any ratio. It could be even three is to one ratio also. Suppose we get like this. So you are getting three is to one ratio. We can get the different ratios can be there. But it is very pakka that you are getting a fixed number of P wave followed by one QRS. Now we talk about third degree heart block, so called complete heart block. Here, P and QRS, they are independent. There is no correlation between P and QRS, but PP interval is constant and, and RR interval is constant. <clears throat> this is again. Remember, 2B block and complete heart block, they are dangerous and these are which what we need, urgent pacing is required in these patients, right? So this is all about the heart block. So we continue more about heart blocks. Now I'm going to talk to you regarding 
anterior and posterior hemi blocks. But before I discuss anterior and posterior hemi block, let me discuss some basic concept. Here is the <coughs> KV bund node. Here is the bundle of his right bundle branch and left. All of you know the right and left bundle uh, branches there. But some of you are not aware that left bundle is has got further two division. One is anterior and posterior. Right? So left bundle has one anterior part and one posterior part. Suppose, and of course this is the right bundle and this is the left. Suppose the blockage occur at this site number one. So site number one blockage indicate what? Right bundle branch block. This we know we have read earlier. Suppose the blockage occur at site number two. This is left bundle branch block. This we are we know. But the suppose blockage occur at site number three. This is three numbers, right? left anterior hemi block and if it block occurs at site number four alone then we call as left posterior hemi block these two we have already read okay however <clears throat> for a quick revision of what we are going to get in rbb and lbb in ecg if you see now, if you are getting M pattern in V1, W pattern in V6, M in V1 and W in V6, this is right bundle branch block with, of course, the QRS interval is more than 0.11 second. That is the highlight of right or left bundle branch block. So M in V1 and W in V6 is RBB, but if you get ULTA, if you get W in V1, M in V6 is LBB. You can make a box like this also. Now, what about anterior hemi block and posterior hemi block? In left anterior hemi block, you get left axis deviation and in this case you get right axis deviation this is important point okay so in left anterior hemi block you are going to get left axis deviation and in the case of left posterior hemi block you are going to get right axis deviation so now let's see we have one patient who has a one site one block that means he has RBB that means he has RBB plus he also have site number three blockage that is he has left anterior hemi block or we have one patient who has right bundle branch block site number one plus site number four that is left posterior hemi block if we are getting any recording like this then we can see he has got bi fascicular block bi fascicular block means right bundle plus either left anterior or left posterior is bi fascicular block now, what is trifascicular block? Trifascicular block is first degree hard block, that means the PR interval is more than how much? 0 0.20 second, we read it just now plus we are getting by fascicular block
bifascicular block is this one. So we we call it trifascicular when bifascicular plus first degree heart block is trifascicular block is there. But there is one more criteria. Suppose in one recording you have taken a long L2 lead, you have taken and in one uh, recording only at place you are getting right bundle branch block and in some lead, some uh, some uh, other beads you are also getting left bundle branch block. If these two are coming in the same ECG of a same patient that again indicate trifascicular block. So we got two types of, two criteria of trifascicular block. One is the first degree heart block plus bifascicular block and other is uh, RBB alternating with LBB in the same patient, in the same ECG recording is again a trifascicular block. This, these blocks, especially the uh, trifascicular block and bifascicular block, they need urgent pacing urgent pacing is also needed in 2B block and as well as complete heart block and urgent pacing is also needed in symptomatic bradycardia who are not responding to medical therapy. Okay, so this is all about the heart block. In the next lecture, I'll be talking to you regarding arrhythmias. So stay tuned till, till that and those of you who have not seen the previous lectures, you can see in the YouTube. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you very much.